gentlemen. Welcome to the beat down of the century. No international election could trump this seat. Not even Bruce Wayne could Bruce Willis this die hard back of the whip. So to all the new, to all the meat milling around, stop the tweets, take your seats, and prepare for this warning. See, this is no longer about poetry. Instead, it's a fight for the crown of royalty, and this prize is not easy to pawn, so tonight, they will fight for the throne of the Son of God. But first, a word from our sponsors. They say, behind every successful king is a queen, who isn't crazy enough to burn his kingdom to the ground, but like Sodom and Gomorrah, it's about to go down. But hold on. See, we're not gonna travel far, because from what I hear, charity begins at home in the heart. So with that, let us state that the king is away off to battle dragons, breathing flames so high it must be fueled by the air of our deflated currency. See, he sits marinating in meat, ings. As he watches his employers, these fatties making money, these fatties and money, a fitting combo while at home. Queen holds down the fort, takes care of the entire household because she knows wherever her man sits is his throne, invests in her castle like Proverbs 31 installments, expecting no return because she knows she will forever be the interest of her husband's heart. See, their love is like the sun and moon that forever commune, even though they are miles apart, she is the church. And he is the Christ. And though he will come back like a thief in the night, best believe she will be ready, but then again, so will the many disguised as the books that trap beauty in beasts' modern day cave, like the symphonies in the Phantom of the Opera days, like, like Cinderella and Fairy Godmother does. But without further ado, let me introduce you to round one. In this corner, weighing in the rebellion of the sinful nature and the blood of her savior, the Christian, the saint, the church. And in this other corner, weighing in the shackles of hell and the jealousy of Joseph's unrepentant brothers wanting to take a bite out of the throne like Suarez's second official attempt at his first descent. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Lucifer, aka Devil. Oh, he prefers you call him Satan. The bell rings and the fight begins, but before the church can even battle, she is immobilized now. That gives Satan the opportunity to gouge out an eye pause. Gouging out an eye would get rid of the lust of the eye, but then again the lust of the flesh and the pride of life are still alive play. So he comes in with a mix of judo, karate, and every other fighting style to ever exist, but who could be shocked or pissed? He has been practicing in the bowels of hell for so long, but it's cool. Because church bounces back up with a 2 Corinthians 5, 7. See, I walk by faith, not by sight. So devil, guess what? You can keep my damn eyes. See, devil just laughs. Devil just laughs and complies, see he has a secret weapon. And that's what the church has disguised and desperately get hard with pride and lies that her good works can save. I see she's kept the blood of her savior in a souvenir jar on the dining room table. So every time she rushes to say her prayer, she can always relate to a process of grace. Round two. Her cross was way too long, she had to drop it low. See, she dropped her cross so she could float like a butterfly sting, like a bee, but she's been hit with demons, something the eyes cannot see. See, she's forgotten that her battle isn't against flesh and blood, but against principalities, authorities, and rulers of the dark. She's forgotten that the battlefield is her heart, and this is not mortal combat. <laughs> but look at her. Look at her, seated on the floor, looking like a victim of domestic abuse. Honey, no one is gonna feel sorry for you because you're the one who let Satan in and you're the one who let him try on your master's shoes. Round three. Ready to jackknife powerbomb her fate, Satan taps his elbow, the crowd goes wild and screams, finish this, but in the distance we hear tag me in. See, you ain't got a front because Jesus is coming in. A tag team more iconic than Barack and Michelle Obama. Then Jalita and Mulenga, then hunger and hungry lions, see? <laughs> see, there is no need for uppercuts or power drives. He throws a boyaka, boyaka, Roman 619, dead to sin but alive in Christ. Now watch the horns fly, see? See Matthew 8, 16, like an afternoon snap. Now with that Bible verse, the Lord is casting out demons with double backhand slaps. Gives the devil a roundhouse kick tour to show him who this place really belongs to. A John Cena attitude adjustment to put Satan in the ICU. See, it only took... See, it only took three nails, like the countdown, to watch the fulfillment of prophecy reveal that the serpent would bruise his heel, but he would crush its head. Now with that said, 
He picks up the church, wipes away each crimson stain. See, her anatomy is no longer Meredith Grey. She is Snow White. Now watch her stand upright. Tie whatever's left of her hair in a bun, Peruvian, Indian, Jamaican, it doesn't matter, cause to him the true beauty is the one it sits upon, her hair is her veil. Reminding him that this is his bride, no fast and furious, no stopping for gas, ride or die type love, cause even if she's completely bald or has a table cut, her lashes will remind him of a life.